Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners on how to record a customer deposit. So I'm going to show you two ways in this video of how you can do this. And I like to use each way uh, in different situations. Okay, so I'm going to walk through each of those with you here. So now a customer deposit is when the customer is going to pay you money. You haven't yet created an invoice, but they're going to put money down on a project. Uh, it might be an estimate, might be something like that. Uh, but they're going to give you money in advance and you have not created an invoice yet. Okay. So the first situation is if they're going to pay you the balance pretty quickly, I say like within 30 to 60 days. So they, this first situation, they give you a deposit and you're going to do the work and then you're going to issue an invoice within 30 to 60 days, some short term time frame. Uh, this first way would be applicable. At least this is the way I do it. Okay. So basically what I do is when they send in this thousand, let's say I'm going to use a thousand dollar deposit, uh, we're going to go to customers and we are going to receive payments. Okay. So I'm going to choose a customer. Uh, let's say the Sonia Bristol repairs. Okay. So you'll see here, there's no invoice. Uh, there's nothing due for this customer, but let's say they pay a thousand dollars. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just basically save and close this. Okay, so we've got this payment. It would go to undeposited funds in this sample file, and then I'm going to make the bank deposit. All right, so here's what this does here. Let me tab through this. Okay, and you're going to see it says leave the credit to be used later or refund the amount to the customer. We're going to leave it as a credit to be used later. So if I hit save and close, okay, a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. Okay, and it gives you these options here. We're just going to click OK and save it. So what this is going to do, and I want to show you in a report, uh, if I go to Customers and Receivables, AR Aging Summary, and I go to, let's see, Sonia Bristol. Here it is right here. You'll see there's a negative $1,000. Okay, so in general, I don't like to see negatives on an, an AR Aging Summary. Uh, but this is how this is going to show up because this is a credit on Sonia Bristol's account for this job repairs. All right. So now when we go to create an invoice, all right, so let's say we go to Sonia and we finish the work and we're going to create an invoice. I'm going to say this is a remodel. Let me go to the item and let's say that the install labor is, you know, like a hundred. All right. So we've got a $6,000 invoice. So now we're going to send this invoice to her and we're going to hit save and close. So now you'll see here that the amount due is $5,000. So when we go to receive a payment for Sonia Bristol, let me go back down here. We're going to say repairs and she's going to pay $5,000. All right. And you can see it says, leave this as an underpayment. Okay, so it's just recognizing that there's an invoice and she made a payment of $5,000, but there is an unused credit. All right, so in this case, we're going to apply the credit. We're gonna hit done and discount applied. So now the total amount due will zero out the $6,000 invoice, okay? So this is, I like to do this when it's kind of a short term, 30, 60, even maybe 90 days, uh, you can show that credit in their account. And then when you do the invoice, you apply that credit. Okay, so that's the first way. Okay, so let me hit save and close. Now, if you have a, let's say a down payment or a customer deposit, and it's going to be a longer term, like let's say it's like, you know, four, five, six months, you know, sometimes they'll even do it, you know, a year. Uh, we want to generally record this a little bit different way. All right. So in this case, let's say that same job, we'll say that we're doing another job for Sonia Bristol and we are going to um, get a thousand dollars down, but it's going to be a longer term deposit. All right. So in this case, and this one can be a little bit tricky, you can still do it the first way, uh, but it will show your AR aging summary a little bit, you know, with a negative amount, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, and could throw off your financial statements just a little bit. Okay, it depends on how much in customer deposits you're getting. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do is we want to go to banking and make deposits. Okay, so let me, let's see. Okay, so deposit to checking. All right, 
And I want to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to revert this. I'm going to save a new. Okay. So this screen comes up. We're not going to deposit this with other money. So we're going to hit cancel. So we are going to say receive from Sonia Bristol for repairs. So this is the from account. Okay. So we are going to, in your books, you're going to create an account called customer deposits. And you can see uh, this is a current liability. Okay. And this is a current liability because they have given us money, but we have not yet done the work. Okay. So technically we still owe this money to this customer. We have not earned it. This is not revenue. It is a deposit that the customer has made and it's a liability because we are holding their money. We still have to do the work. All right. So we're going to choose customer deposits. All right. And you can put something in the memo deposit for job one, two, three, four, whatever the case may be. You're going to put in your check number. Payment method is going to be a check class remodel. And we're going to say a thousand dollars. Okay. So we're going to hit save and close. So we're going to go deposit this money at the bank. Now you'll see here that there is nothing showing on the AR aging summary for Sonia Bristol. All right. So what this does is we're going to go up to reports. I'm going to go to our balance sheet. All right. So as of December 15th, and let's see if I go down to my liability section, customer deposits. Okay. Make sure I have the date range. Okay. There was a credit there, but you'll see here's where that thousand dollars comes in. Okay. Deposit for this job. All right. So now when, uh, the customer, when you, you know, you perform the work, you, uh, are going to, uh, issue an invoice for this customer. What you're going to do, you're going to go to customer grade invoices, and we're going to say Sonia Bristol repairs. All right. Class remodel. We're going to say item. I'm going to say install labor again, and we're going to say, oops, let me tab over here. We're going to say a hundred. All right. So a $6,000 invoice. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit save and close. All right. So now it's just going to show over here on the AR aging summary, a repair invoice for $6,000. Okay. So if we go to customers receive payments, all right. And we say Sonia Bristol repairs, you're going to see that there is no credit. Okay. So if we say $5,000, there's no credit. Okay. It does not show up when you go to receive payments. This is why sometimes that first way is going to maybe be a little bit better for you because it's going to help you remember that there's a credit out there. Okay. So in this case, there's not. All right. So this is, gets a little bit tricky and this is why this one gets a little bit more into accounting. Okay. So what you want to do. Okay. At this point, you can do one of two things. You can go back to that original deposit. All right. And if I go back to make deposits and let me cancel this. Okay. And we go to Sonia Bristol. You can go to this original deposit. Now this, I do not recommend this way necessarily, but you can do this. You can say accounts receivable. And what this will do is it will make it a credit on Sonia Bristol's account. Okay. That way, when you go to receive payments, you can offset it. It'll show it as a credit, just like it did in the first way. And you can offset this against that. Now I, I'm not a big fan of going back and changing transactions. Okay. So the other thing you can do is you can go in and you can, uh, make a journal entry. Okay. So if you're not familiar with journal entries, this may not be the best way to do this. All right. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, go down to customer deposits. We're going to hit a thousand dollars debit because that will reduce the liability. Okay. You can put in your memo. The big thing is you want to make sure that you go in and you put in the name. Okay. Sonia Bristol repairs. And then here we're going to put accounts receivable. Okay. Let me find that a thousand dollars. And same thing, we're going to do Sonia Bristol and you want to make sure you do it to repairs. All right. I'll go ahead and put in a class. 
Okay, now if I hit save and close, now you'll see that now it shows up as a credit. Now it's down to $5,000. So when I go to customers and I say receive payments and I say Sonia Bristol repairs, I say $5,000. Okay, you're gonna see that there's a credit and the reason there's a credit is because I put her name next to that journal entry. Okay, so let me apply this and I wanna show you what it does. Okay, so now she does not owe us anything. She has paid 5,000, she put $1,000 down. Okay, so what this is going to do, if I go back to transactions by account, okay, so you'll see here, this is where the deposit came in, $1,000, and this is where I journal entered it out, $1,000. Okay, so you get to the same end result. The second way just requires maybe a little more accounting knowledge, but will keep your financials a little bit straighter. Uh, and so generally though, if you're not familiar with journal entries, if you're not that familiar with accounting, I say do it the first way, because it's gonna allow you to keep track of those deposits for specific customers much, much easier, okay? All right, any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, and uh, any comments, any questions, happy to answer those. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University. I teach you not only how to use QuickBooks, but why you do certain things. Okay, so there's accounting woven into it. And this will really help you understand your business and help you grow your business. Head over there now, qbuniversity.org.